how many of you have read Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow? Has anyone read that? Yeah, several of you have. Great. And in there, Daniel Kahneman talks about this idea of system one and system two thinking. And uh, I'll give you some examples. So if I ask you to multiply 17 times 24 in your head, not using pen and paper. So go ahead and try it. So that's an example of system two thinking. System two thinking is effortful. You got to concentrate. You have to focus, right? As opposed to this. If I show you this picture and I say, what, is the, what are you looking at? What's this a picture of? What would you say? The sad boy, right? That's an example of system one thinking. It's quick. It's intuitive. It's not hard at all, right? So system one thinking, quick and intuitive. System two thinking, effortful and, and focused and concentrated. So what Kahneman says is that most of the time, when we just walk around in our lives, we are actually in system one mode. We are walking around making quick, intuitive judgments. We're not thinking very hard. We don't like to think very hard. It takes too much glucose, too much effort. Our brains don't like to do it. So actually, most of the time, we happily wander around in system one mode. When people are doing that system two effortful thinking, their pupils dilate. You can actually tell when someone is in system two mode by looking at their pupils. So I have a short video I'm going to run. So first, I'm going to ask her a system one question. That's the easy, intuitive, right? I'm going to ask her to talk about her favorite TV show. That's not hard. So she talks about that for a while. Then I ask her a system two question. And what I ask her, actually, is I ask her to name the states in the United States, because she's from the US, the states and their capitals, OK, which is a pretty tough. That's a system two. And I want you to watch her eyes as I do that. You'll see them dilate. It's very subtle, but you'll see them dilate. And then, I'm, and then I go back to a system one question. I ask her what her favorite animal is. All right. So let's take a look and see. So tell us about um, one of your favorite TV shows. Um, Lost is my favorite TV show. That's from a couple of years ago. Right? Yeah, ABC. OK. And why do you like it? Because it's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Because it is completely cohesive, like through the entire season. Okay, I have another question for you now. It's a different question. I'd like you to name as many capitals of states as you can remember. Name the capital and I'll name the state it goes with. I don't know a lot of capitals. Mm, try. <laughs> okay. Um, Madison, Wisconsin. Um, Springfield, Illinois. Juneau, Alaska. Um, what's that place in New York? Albany. Uh, New York? Is that New Jersey? Um, um, what's your favorite animal? I think a koala bear. Why? Because they just hang out in... Um, eat a lot of bamboo and sleep, and they're really cute. When she was doing the capitals, there was a point when her pupils constrict, constricted again. That was when she had given up. And Daniel Kahneman used to, he would do these experiments, uh, and he'd have a big video camera outside the room. So he was actually outside the room and having the people do this on their own. And he would talk to them in a microphone. And he'd give them, you know, system two tasks to do. And then he would see their pupils constrict again, and he'd go, You've given up. Don't give up. And they'd go, oh, God, how did he know that? <laughs> yeah. He's in my brain. Right? All right, so I thought we should try this out. Should we try this out? So think up a system one question. I mean, just you know, ask them about the apartment they live in or you know, something where they went to college, just something easy that won't be hard for them to talk about. And then you're going to think up a system two. Let them do that for a minute and look at their, uh, the pupils. And then you're going to think up a system two question. That's the hard one. I mean, ask them to multiply numbers together or ask them for you know, what countries are in the United Nations or you know, just something difficult. And look and see if you can see their pupils dilate. It'll be subtle, but you may be able to see it. And then you can go back to a system, two, uh, system one question if you want so you can see the pupils constrict again. All right? Then when you do that, then you're going to switch. <laughs>
Did anybody see it? How many of you could see the pupil? Yeah, some of you good. good. It's subtle, but you can see it. Now, I do have to tell you that um, there's one of the reasons why your pupils might dilate like that, and that's if you're attracted to someone. So I'm not saying, I'm not commenting on that, but you'll have to figure that out by yourself. People, this paragraph. In a lake, there is a patch of lily pads. Every day, the patch doubles in size. If it takes 48 days for the patch to cover the entire lake, how long would it take for the patch to cover half of the lake? How many of you say 24 days? And how many of you say 47? All right, and the right answer is 47. A lot of people, if you just come up to them on the street and ask them this question, they actually get it wrong. Interestingly, when he would put the paragraph in a font that was hard to read, exactly the same, Thing, a lot more people got it right. Hmm. They got it right when the font was hard to read. You know, why would that be? Well, it's because uh, this problem requires system two thinking. And as I said, we walk around every day, and our normal mode of thinking is system one. So we read the paragraph, we go, oh, yeah, yeah, half of 48 is 24, I'm going to say 24. When the font is difficult to read, what essentially happens is system one goes, I don't know, I can't see what's going on, and turns to system two and say, you do this. This is too hard. I don't want to do this anymore. Right? So we can actually kick in system two thinking by making something difficult to read, which, of course, is why I'm going to say that at any website you're designing, all the fonts should be Hard to read. No, 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 no. I can't say that. So, it's a, but it's an interesting problem. And certainly, if you need people to make difficult logical decisions that they think through, you're going to have to figure out some way to try and kick them into system two thinking because the normal mode will be system one. So, I need uh, seven volunteers, seven brave people. Uh, if, you've or, if you've always wanted to you know, play percussion in the band, this is your opportunity. If you've never played percussion, that's okay. So I need seven people to come up, and, and we're going to create a little percussion band and to help me demonstrate. So seven people can be from the... We'll wait. If you want to come down from the way back, we'll wait on you. All right, we have one. We have two. We have three. Coming down from the back. Four, five, six, seven. Oh, no, four. They, they were just getting up. Let's see. One, two, three, four. All right, we, I think we got it. Come on up. Excellent, excellent. We have steps right out here. So you guys uh, pick whatever you'd like to play. Different drums. We have a wood block thing. I left my cowbell at home. It was too heavy to bring on the, on the suitcase. Both, both is good, yeah. All right. One, two, three, four, five. You know, we're missing a person, aren't we? I need one more. Ah, here he comes. All right. Very good. So we'll wait for our seventh person here. You got two drums, a wood block, and a shaker to choose from here. What would you like? Shaker. Shaker. All right. Line up here. So what I would like you guys to do is play. anything, by the way? The synchrony. So, and especially because there was one person who had experience and knew what they were doing, right? And uh, it was kind of interesting to watch because everyone else was like, oh, hey, that sounds good. I'm going with that, you know? 
And then at first they were just kind of like, and then they were like, okay, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. And People like, have a deep desire to belong to a group. It's, it's in my book, uh, How to Get People to Do Stuff. It's one of the seven drivers of motivation that I talk about. We know that when people do something in synchrony, when they drum like that, when they sing, when they dance, um, when they play in a band, uh, we know a couple things happen physiologically. First of all, oxytocin is released. And oxytocin is uh, a bonding chemical and it will make the group bond. So actually those seven people, now if you see them at break all huddled together, it's because they've, uh, they, they may not realize it, but they've had an oxytocin release together, and it's going to make them bond together. We also know, for instance, there's research study that when people sing together, their heartbeats start beating in uh, synchrony with each other. Right? So um, all of this, you know, we tend to think about, you know, we, we see and we hear and we have our senses and there's separate senses and that's, you know, a separate part of the brain than the social emotional part, but it's not, okay? We, we, you know, I'd like to talk about, oh, we have three brains, you know, the, the new brain where conscious thought is and the mid and emotional brain which um, processes social and emotional information, the old brain which takes care of our survival. I talk about that a lot, but in reality, you know, we have one brain and it's all interconnected. So when you are designing and when you're making decisions about what people are going to see and what people are going to hear and how that's going to affect the brain, understand that you, that person brings to bear all of themselves, including their social and emotional life as well. <laughs>